You know, every time I go on one of these flights to rescue Zoe, I remember the summer we almost lost her. She was three years old. It happened one morning at this cottage we used to rent. We were all together sleeping in bed. It was a wonderful time in our lives. We still felt we had a future together, the three of us. Huh. Did you ever visit that cottage? I don't think so. I remember I was awakened by the sound of Zoe's breathing. It was labored. I looked across and noticed it. She was sweating and all swollen. I, I grabbed her and rushed in the kitchen and sp splashed some water on her face. What happened? I didn't know. I, I, I was in a complete panic. I, I guess she'd been bitten by some insect, uh, but there was no doctor. The nearest hospital was 40 miles away, and, and she was continuing to swell up. Clara took her in her arms and tried to breastfeed her while I dialed the hospital. And I finally got a doctor. He surmised that there was a nest of baby black widow spiders in the mattress. He said they had to be babies or else with Zoe's body weight, she'd be dead. He said I had to rush her to the hospital. He said, Mr. Stevens, there's a good chance you can get her here before the throat closes. But it's very important that you keep her calm. Then he asked if there was one of us that she was more relaxed with than the other, and I, I said, yes, me, which was true enough, because at that particular moment, Miss Clara's eyes were all wild with fear, and the, the fear was contagious. I was a better actor, that's all. And Zoe? Loved us equally then. Just that she hates us both equally now. And when the doctor said that I, I had to hold her on my lap and let Clara drive to the hospital, he asked me to bring a small, sharp knife. He said it had to be clean, there was no time to sterilize properly. Explained how to perform an emergency tracheotomy. How to cut into a throat and windpipe without causing it to bleed to death. He said there would be a lot of blood. I said I didn't think I could do it. He's, he said, Mr. Stevens, if her throat closes up and her breathing stops, you're going to have to. You will have about a minute and a half, possibly two minutes, and she'll probably be unconscious when you do it. But if you manage to keep her calm and relaxed, not let a little heart beat too fast, uh, and spread the poison around, you might just make it here first. Now you get going, he said. He hung up. It was an unforgettable drive. I was divided into two parts. One part was Daddy singing a lullaby to his little girl, and the other part was a surgeon with a knife ready to cut into her throat. I waited for the second Zoe's breath stopped to make the incision. What happened? Hmm? What happened? Oh, nothing. <laughs> we got to the hospital in time. I did not have to go as far as I was prepared to go. I was prepared to go all the way.